Hello and welcome to the latest video on Deep, on Deep FX Studio Development. In this video, I'm just going to look at what's new, what's different in the latest build, which is version uh, 0.3.5. Um, so a few things have changed, but if you haven't been keeping up, a lot of things have changed. So, but this video is just going to be focusing on this uh, this version, this release. Uh, the uh, first thing that you notice, the visual change anyway, is that there's a toolbar now. So we've included a toolbar and tools. So tools are just a quick way of setting up networks now. If you've watched the earlier videos, this changes nothing. Same rules apply here. Um, there's no drastic overhaul. All this does is just automate a bunch of stuff for you. Uh, so this is good for beginners. It's a sample for sample networks. For users, it just speeds up uh, rep uh, repetitive tasks for you. Okay. Um, and all this is possible through Python. Okay, so, and all these scripts have been included as samples, so you can reverse engineer them and create your own tools. So, and you can locate the samples. One second. Uh, in the samples folder, Python, and the toolbar. And you'll find them, so you can reverse engineer that. It's straightforward, everything's documented. So, and in the future, you'll be able to add your samples to the uh, toolbar and to the menus. So, straightforward. Uh, working on that. So, let me just get started. Let me just demonstrate the toolbar here. Yeah? So, I'll just set up something. Uh, I'll just set up a quick bullet uh, simulation so, with a couple of clicks after I set up the geometry. Okay. okay, so you can select objects either in the viewport or in the graph. So I'll just use the graph and I'll just go to physics, rigid objects. So when you set up a network, it will ask you a few questions depending if there's a solver in the scene, stuff like that. And all this depends on the script logic. It's not very, uh, it's not uh, strict. You can always uh, edit the um, scripts yourself, of course. So if I press play, we see we've got a simulation but we want one of these to be static so uh, we put a static script so this is mainly if you've got a lot of objects you want to make static so if it's one object it's easy to do but I'll do that and I'll just press play and there okay like that so uh, it's pretty straightforward actually yeah so and the other nodes do similar things so they might not ask you questions they might ask you questions depends on the context and situation you can go through the scripts if you're into Python um, but alright, uh, and we'll be adding more, of course, for the other tools like the VDBs and the grain tools and stuff like that. We'll be extending those. Okay, and oh, of course, uh, now since if you've got problems uh, positioning things in the perspective, we've added the other views top, bottom, left, right. So that's easy now. Uh, easier, so that's, that's there. Um, okay, well, moving on to the next feature that's been introduced. Next big thing here in the change of the fracture tools that have been updated. More have been added and uh, they've been made more robust. So uh, there's three new ones actually. So there's cutout, slice, and plane. But only look at a cutout and slice because plane is pretty straightforward. I'll explain why. So let's start with the cutout fracture. I'll just set up the fracture geometry. And one second. Uh, okay, and then I'll just click same object. I'll go to fracture. I'll do cutout just to set up the basic network there. So you need two things for this to work: an image and a plane. So, but the plane is easy. We've included a new node called an implicit plane, which is just an imaginary plane you can use to set up stuff like this. It's actually useful for other things, mm, like the plane fracture, of course. But Self-explanatory later. So, mm. <coughs> this up in the center. Um, I'll just put this in. I'll just zoom in so you can see this. So this goes uh, setting up the planes going to there. Of course, you can see in the in the viewport we're missing an image, so I'm going to add that now. So, a uh, cutout image is. Uh, let me just uh, demonstrate this to you what a cutout image is. 
Let me just open one for you. Um, second. Um, let me just paint. So a color image is just a monochrome image with white lines and black uh, and black. So the white lines re represent the fracture, uh, the fracture point, and the black is just the rest of the geometry. So you can create any type of pattern as long as it uh, looks something like this. Okay, and uh, it's good for things like uh, glass and bricks, anything, anything that's not really any pr any patterns that are not really easily procedural. For example, uh, like noise, you can use this to create very specific types of fracture patterns. So let me just demonstrate uh, what this looks like. Um, one second. Okay. And let's go to mm -hmm. so let's go to second. And done. So uh, this is what it looks like when you uh, done. So the pattern, the fracture pattern, so as you can see, is the same as the fracture there. So we can go to solid wire and do 0.5, and we see that the same. So and setting up, so we can test this pretty easily now with the shelf with the toolbox here. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm just going to hide a few things uh, like that and just go back to here and set up another quick simulation for you to see so I'll just add that and add some collision geometry right here mm. stretch that out that. Uh, okay and then I'll just click out there so I'm just zoom out. So this is the new thingy. I will just do rigid object, same as before. So I also want it uh, uh, to be static. So uh, another rule here. So if I select this and make this a rigid object, it will ignore the fractures. So what you need to do to include the fractures into the simulation, you need to select the last node with the actual fractured pieces. Okay. So here, in this case, it's the cutout fracture node. So I'll select that and I'll say rigid body. And say yes to everything. Okay. And then I'll just hide the that mesh and I'll press play. <clears throat> Give it a second. And then do slice and there you go. But I forgot to do one important thing here. So just reset that. I'll go into bullet node and change from triangles to convex house. So the packing of the fractures is perfect. And the only fracture on impact. Like that. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so I'll move on to slice fracturing. Since this is procedural, I will not restart from scratch. I'll just pop in a new uh, fracture node. So I got that. I'll just click cut out and delete it. So I will show you what it looks like before explaining what it does. So I'm just going to enter the. I'll zoom in and uh, put the transforms for the source mesh, which is important. And I'm just going to plug this in into the bullet. Uh, thing. So uh, if I just press, I press play. We will see. Uh, okay, I'll just stop there and rewind a bit so you can have a better look at this. And so, yes. So all the slice structure does is slice the geometry uh, along planes, flat planes. So here it's a five by five plane. So if we look at the settings. 5 by 5 by 5. There, of course, you can add angle variations and stuff like that. And this is good for creating things like splintering wood. Let's see if I've still got an example of that uh, uh, on my computer. Uh, one second. Uh, yes. Anyway, uh, the videos on my channel have misplaced it at the moment. If you just scroll through, you see some the video on splintering wood that uses the slice fracture. I wanted to show you here, um, but 
seem to have missed. Oh, okay, here it is actually splintering wood. So this example actually uses the slice fracture, so you can get some pretty good looking wood with this. Okay, so that's using slice fracturing right there. Okay, so you can create effects like that pretty easily. Okay, uh, so moving on, have I forgot anything else? Um, yes, there is one more thing that we'll be adding to the other fracture notes that's important. One second. And that will be recursive fracturing, which is good for adding more detail. So, before you, I don't think you could do this in the last build. I think this is uh, 3. Point f uh, this version is 3.3.5, so it's recursive fracturing, but it's only available in Veronae fracturing at the moment. So, we'll go to Veronae. And as you can see, the chunks are really big if I have a very low sampling, right? So, but let's say you wanted to just continuously uh, fracture those same pieces. It's simple, you just uh, fracture it again, okay? So, we don't need this. I made a mistake. I forgot to unselect that, but uh, uh, one second, we want that, like that. Okay, so the pieces become small and smaller. So just by feeding the output of the Veronai into another Veronai, we get small and smaller pieces. And since you can input samples into the Veronai fracture, you can actually uh, artistically fracture your pieces now, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we'll be adding the recursive fracturing to the other fracturing nodes as time goes by. Then the plane fracture I won't be talking about is very basic. It's just you, the same plane you saw will cut an object along a plane. So, like in half or something like that, you'll get two pieces from the original. So, that's good. Uh, that, can, that can be good for setting up bigger simulations. I don't know, maybe like a ro big road fracture. You cut it up into smaller pieces first and you feed that into a Veronai fracture, for example, to get smaller pieces in specific places, etc. I don't know, it's artistic, it's up to you as a user what you do with that. So, uh, that's it. There's obviously more things in here I, I, I might not have ca uh, covered. I know I did. Uh, so, from there's the volumes to points for the open VDB, which is very straightforward. Just uh, samples the volumes to points. So, you can feed that into your fluid simulation or your Voronoi fracture. It's up to you. I uh, will be adding more sampling techniques as time goes by, of course. Yes, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, some feedback is always good. Hope you enjoy this. And of course, the promotion is still going on uh, for the better. We don't know when the better will end. Um, so at this point, it's looking like it's still going. Maybe it might reach the end of the year. Oh, of course, we keep adding stuff until, we get, until people are satisfied with things. So, yes, uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next video.